So how do I know when do I walk off to the flesh and how do I know when I walk off to the spirit? It seems like people struggle to discern that. So I want to say tonight, walking off to the flesh makes you a legal person, a law person, a do it, don't do it person. Walking off to the spirit is a flow. It's a divine connection with God. It's a divine connection with peace and with joy and with happiness and with everything that is the fruit of the Spirit. Now, I, I want to read it to you out of the Voos translation. The Kenneth Voos translation would say something like that. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the promptings of the Spirit. So, it means the flesh dictates. And the Spirit prompts you. Thank you. I hope you know the difference between dictate and prompt. Prompt is a soft nudge. It's this way, this way. Dictate is you got to go this way. Prompting is don't go there. Dictate is you don't go there. The one is law and the one is spirit. The one is flesh and the one is spirit. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 5 says, not that we are fit, qualified, and sufficient in ability of ourselves to form personal judgments or to claim or count anything as coming from us, but our power and ability and sufficiency are from God. I trust in God. I have faith in God. My eyes are on Jesus. I look to Jesus, the author, finisher of my faith. I don't trust in my own abilities. I am fit and qualified and sufficient because of Jesus Christ. Verse 6. It is He who has qualified us, making us to be fit and worthy and sufficient as ministers and dispensers of a new covenant of salvation through Christ. Listen to the rest. Not ministers of the letter. That is of the legally written code, but of to the Spirit. For the code of the law kills, but the Holy Spirit makes alive. Okay. Wow. Trust we're going to have a great time here today. The letter kills. That is the law. That is flesh. Read Romans 5, 6, 7, and 8. The spirit makes alive. Or gives life. Makes alive. Now we know... Again, that Jesus said in John 6, 63, the same thing as what Paul is writing here. He says, the letter kills. Jesus says it. But the Spirit makes alive. The words that I speak unto you, they are Spirit and they are life. So Jesus says the words, I speak. They are Spirit and they are life. So I'm not going to ask you what your words are, but I'm just saying Jesus says, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Now, again, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he says, God has qualified us and made us fit to be dispensers 
and ministers of a totally new testament that is of the spirit because if i minister the letter it kills but if i minister spirit it makes alive so if i speak are people coming alive or if i speak do people cringe and fawn in fear and become depressed and anxious do i speak words of life or do i speak words of death Say, I refuse to speak death. I make a quality decision. I will speak life. I make a quality decision. I will not speak death. I make a quality decision. I will speak life. I make a quality decision. I will not speak death. But I will speak life. Okay. So... Going back to that Vus translation, you know, uh, there's no condemnation if I walk in the Spirit or if I live in the Spirit or be in the Spirit. He says, if I don't live by the dictates of the flesh, but after the promptings of the Spirit. Now, coming to the letter and the law, you know, God says something to this effect in Deuteronomy 30. The commandment that I give you this day is not difficult. Now, how come nobody can keep the law if God says it's not difficult? Well, I hope I have somebody to go with me today. God says it's not difficult. Yet nobody can keep the commandments or the law because it's very hard and difficult. Now God try and explain it to us. He says this commandment that I give you this day is not difficult. It's in your heart and in your mouth to speak it. Then he says I bring before you today. Now remember this is the commandment. This is not outside the commandment. This is in the commandment. I bring before you today death and life. Cursing and blessing. Evil and good. Choose which one you want. Put it in your heart. Put it in your mouth and speak it. If I speak the one that judge and condemn, it will produce death. But if I speak the part that will bring life, I shall live and also bring life. Amen. Now Paul repeats the same thing in Romans 10 and he comes and says, he says, you know, the righteousness which is of the law is work, 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 work. And you can only earn and deserve by what you're working for. I work, I work, I work, I work. But the righteousness which is of faith speaks. It does not boast in working. It boasts in I speak. It does not boast in operating systems. It does not boast in what I legally do and achieve. It boasts in what I say. What I say. The word is near you in your heart and in your mouth to say it. Paul says, where is the boasting of works then? He says, it is excluded. By which law? By the law of faith. You see, but we sit and say, can I make that decision to speak? Or am I going to forever be under a legal code of written stuff that says, if I don't do, I'm not going to make it. If I don't do, I'm not going to produce. If I don't do, I'm not going to achieve. It's not for achievers, it's for believers. But I must make the decision. Say, I make a quality decision. I will speak life and not death. Proverbs 18 21 you know it death and life is in the power of the tongue and he that uses it shall eat the fruit thereof not maybe by a man's fruit shall he be known of what type of tree he is if you're a good fruit you got to produce good fruit if you're a bad tree you got to produce bad fruit now Romans 5 tells us that because of one man's disobedience, sin entered. And because of this one man's sin, death came upon all. 
But because of one man's obedience, justification came. And because of that, we have the right to be justified to live. We can now rule in life by one Christ Jesus. How do I rule? By knowing what the fruit of the lips are. Kubis, is the law now totally gone? Did Jesus just fulfill it? Did he finish it? Uh, is it still valid today? But how will I know sin if it's not for the law? How will I know to act right if it's not in the law? What about the word in, what's it, Hebrews 8 verse 10 that says, I will write my law in their minds and I will, no, I will put it in their minds and I will write it upon their hearts. I will put my law in their minds and I will write it on their hearts. And of their sin and iniquity, I will think and remember it no more. God, how does this work? You're going to put the law now in my mind and my heart and then you're not going to think of my iniquity. That is quoted from Ezekiel chapter 36. 25, 26, 27, the verses where he says, I will come and I will take the heart of stone out of you. Heart of stone. I think a stone talks about hardness. Heart of, a heart of stone talks about hardness. You know, every time that they did not believe Jesus, he said to them the following, how is it, have you still live, how is it that you still live in the hardness of your heart? Every time he talks about unbelief, he talks about hardness of heart. When he came out of the tomb and he walked with them for 40 days and it is now time for ascension, the Bible says he rebuked them for the hardness of their hearts and said to them, how is it that you still have the hardness of your heart? Do you not believe me? Then he says, go and preach the gospel and to them that believe, in other words, to them that will not have hard hearts. These signs shall follow, they shall lay hands on the sick, they shall recover, they shall cast out demons, they shall speak in new tongues. So believers is people that have tender hearts. Now where's all the stuff that is for believers? If it's not there, it means somewhere we are believing God, but do we believe the rest? God's commandments and laws is now in my heart and my mind. How will I know which one is the one that kills? How will I know which one is the one that brings life? Easy. The one dictates and the one prompts. Say to the person, I see. Now you can quickly discern for yourself. Forget about discerning the other person. We always want to discern the other person. Just discern for yourself. When are you a law person and when are you a grace person? When are you living by dictates and when are you living by promptings? The gentle nudging of the spirit. Don't do that. Do that. And you say, Holy Spirit. <laughs> I see the gap here. Would you just stand there for a minute? Let me just sort them out. Afterwards, come Holy Spirit, we need thee. Come sweet Spirit, we pray. You should have prayed that before the time. Come in thy strength and thy power. Come in thine own gentle way. Verse 8, Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. What a revelation we had here. But you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe and do according to all that is written in it. For then... You shall make your way prosperous, 
then you shall deal wisely and have good success. <laughs> Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate. In other words, it's in your mouth and in your heart. But it shall not depart out of your mouth. You see, we have people that are always speaking, speaking, speaking. says, no, 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 no. The Bible says we must be hearers. No. Doers. No. How do we become a doer and not a hearer? According to James 1. He says, if you want to be a doer of the word and not only a hearer deceiving yourself, you must be very quick to hear, but you must be very slow to speak. Then he goes on the whole James 1, 2 and 3 and 4. He says, because the quickness of speech shows the wrath of man that doesn't promote the righteousness of God. So if I want to promote the righteousness of God, I must be, don't let it depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night. So that when you speak, after you've observed everything that is written it, you may prosper, you may deal wisely, and you will have good success. When, when I don't just speak, 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 forever speak, but when I first meditate on the word especially, and then speak it out, don't be living by dictates of the flesh, live by promptings of the spirit. Be of a gentle heart, be of a quiet spirit, be quick to hear, but slow to speak. I'm going to give you some examples. Let's go to Exodus 14. Now God gave the promise that he's going to take them out of Egypt into the promised land. And so after 10 plagues, here they're eventually on their way. And they were just on their way. All their camelex settled up. Man, fired up. Ready to go to the promised land. And wow, they're all talking about the great party in the desert. Wow. No more slavery. Oh, no more bondage. No more bondage. Now I'm free from the enemy. No more bondage. No more bondage. One Jew touched the other one and said, Hey. Check behind you. Says, Hey. Who's that? Says, that's Pharaoh with all the Egyptians coming to get us, okay? That's where we find them. Verse 10. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lift up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. That is big fear. I mean, if you're afraid is one thing, but if you're sore afraid, it means you can feel the pain of the fear. I mean, that is very sore afraid. <laughs> that, is, that is very fearful. Oh. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, and thou wast taken as the way to die in the wilderness. I mean, I mean. Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Hey! Hey, please look this way and please be part of the message. Here comes these guys. They are already out of Egypt. They already got all the gold and the silver of the Egyptians. Exodus 12, they stripped the Egyptians of all their wealth. So these guys are not going out on Unos. They're going out loaded. They just got Maseratis and Ferraris and, you know, they just got the best. They haven't got, you know, just like bronze gold. They got gold coins. They got silver coins. They load it. The first time they see the enemy coming back, this is what they say. You know what? 
Because there's no graves in Egypt. You know why you took us out in Egypt? So that we can die in the desert. That's why you took us out. They forgot the promised land. They forgot the promises. They forgot the land of milk and honey. Oh, we're going to die. We're going to die. It's the same in Jesus' time. It's the same today. Mark chapter 4. Jesus says in verse 35. Let us go over unto the other side. Halfway there's a storm. Jesus is sleeping in the back of the boat. Disciples wake him up. Peter said, Lord, do you not care that we perish? You took us over to let us perish in the middle of the day. Uh, the same as the desert. The same in the sea. Jesus said the same as I think Moses would have said. The same as I would say tonight. How is it that you have no faith? Says Jesus. Faith in what? Faith in the word of God. God said we're going to the promised land. They said no we're going to die in the desert. Jesus said let's go over to the other side. They said no we're going to perish in the sea. What did Jesus say? Peace be still. What happened? Stillness came. What happened to them? They died in the desert. But listen. Verse 12. Verse 12. Is not the, this the word that we did tell you in Egypt, saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than we should die in the wilderness. Listen, Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. It's like Jesus speak to the fig tree and said, No man shall eat of the fruit year ever after. Lord, the fig tree you cursed is withered. Have faith in God, I say to you. If you say to this mountain, Be thou removed and cast in the sea, you shall have whatsoever you say. When you say, Believe what you say will come to pass and you shall have whatsoever you say you got the word in your mouth in your heart meditate it observe what's in it speak it and see results in Jesus name listen Moses says verse 14 the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Wow. You want a good translation for hold your peace? Listen to the congregation. Okay. So a good translation. A good translation for hold your peace is to shut your mouth. The Lord is going to fight for you. But if you want him to go through with this thing, you better hold your peace. So that takes us to Joshua 1 verse 8. Joshua, do not let the word depart from your mouth. Meditate upon it day and night. There's all these promises. Don't be in a hurry to say what situations, circumstances and stuff say. Meditate the word. And at the right moment, speak the word. I'm going to fight for you. But you must hold your peace. We will break through. In 2 Kings chapter 2, listen to the story. There was a day... When the Lord was going to take Elijah away from Elisha. Remember the story? And Elijah said to Elisha, uh, stay here because the Lord, you know, has sent me to go on. Elisha said, as truly as you live and the Lord liveth, I will not leave you. Bethel, house of God. So they traveled, so Elijah goes with Elijah. They come to Gilgal. Elijah says, No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Let's go back to Bethel. Bethel. Elijah says, I'm going on. You better stay here. Elijah says, No, 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 no. As the Lord lives and you live, I'm not going to leave you. Here comes the sons of the prophets. 
50 anointed sons of the prophet. Do you know that the Lord is going to take Elijah away? He says, hold your peace. Yeah. Elijah, I'm not going to leave you. Yeah. They come and they say, the Lord, they say, hold your peace. Yeah. Are they speaking truth or are they speaking a lie? They're speaking truth. But is that what Elisha want to hear today? No, he, that is not an in-season word, although it is the word. Yeah. Elijah already said, I'm going on. Elisha said, okay. They come to Gilgal. Elijah says, stay here for the Lord has bid me to go on. Elisha said, as truly as you live and your soul live, I'm not going to leave you. Sons of the prophets, do you know that the Lord is going to take your head away from you today? He says, hold your peace. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not going to leave you. Let's go on. Let's go on. Yeah. Yeah. So they come to Jericho. So Elijah said, I, I bet you stay here for the Lord has, has told me to go on. Sons of the prophets, do you know that God is going to take Elijah away today? He says, hold your peace. Uh, as truly as you live and the Lord live, I'm not going to leave you. They come to the Jordan River. Now this time, Elijah takes his coat, wraps it up, hit the river, water goes open, they go through, come on the other side, Elijah says, what do you want? He says, hey, I want a double portion of your spirit. Elijah says, when you see me, when I go, it shall be so. If you don't see me, well, tough luck. You know? <laughs> and there comes, you know, there comes, you know, a whirlwind, chariots of fire. There goes Elijah in a whirlwind. And Elijah cries out, uh, my father, my father, chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof and there goes Elijah his mantle falls on the ground Elisha picks up the mantle goes to the Jordan River hits the water water goes up he says where's the Lord God of Elijah water goes up here comes Elisha Elijah is gone he's got the coat of Elijah in his hand here comes the 50 sons of the prophets they say the spirit of Elijah is now upon Elisha. The spirit of Elijah is now upon Elisha. Hey, hey, I want to say something. They could have all gotten the spirit that was upon Elijah, but they were just so involved with Elijah's going, Elijah's going, Elijah's going. Elisha said, hold your peace. I'm going to get what he's got. And when Elijah left, he got it. And the others, all of a sudden, look what he's got. Look what he's got. Look what he's got. They said the right thing at the wrong time. Hold your peace, Joshua. Take the word. Meditate upon it. Observe what's in it. Don't just speak it. So let you be, be prosperous. And that you may deal wisely. And that you will have good success. If you struggle, let's go to the New Testament. Jesus is walking around with his disciples and they get news. Lazarus is sick. Jesus says, no, the sickness is not unto death. So they walk on. They get more news. Yeah? Jesus. He says, our friend Lazarus sleeps. He's now hearing from the spirit realm. Our friend Lazarus. They say, it's good. You know, if he's sick and he sleeps, it'll do him good. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus turns around and he says, you struggle to hear. He's dead. <laughs> he didn't say it in the spirit realm. He said it to them. To them, he said, Lazarus sleeps. Because I'm not going to say, I'm not going to speak death. I am life. I'm the giver of life. The words that I speak, they are spirit and life. And this is who I am and this is what I'm going to speak. They struggle to understand. Our friend Lazarus is sick. Our friend Lazarus sleeps. Oh God, it'll do him good. He's dead, man. So they come to the tomb. 
And, you know, everybody's upset and everybody's upset. And Jesus wept. They say, behold, how we love him. And Jesus said, roll away the stone. And then he turns to them again. He says, you know what? For your sakes, I'm glad I was not here. So that you can believe. Lazarus! Bam! Lazarus is out. How quick are we to speak? How quick are we to listen? Be quick to hear and slow to speak. Joshua, let not this word depart out of your mouth. Meditate upon it day and night so that you can observe what is written in it so that you may be prosperous and that you may deal wisely and that you will handle with good success. Amen. Mm. I love this stuff. I think, you know, God is speaking to us. Job 33. The word of the Lord comes to Job. Chapter 33, verse 23, excuse me. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand, to show unto man his uprightness, then he is gracious unto him and saith, Deliver him from going down to the pit. I have found a ransom. Now for those who struggle to understand, Jesus is the ransom. And now God is showing to man that he's righteous because he found one among a thousand with this Jesus to say, yes, I will do it and I will do the sacrifice. I will be the final offering. So it's all about Jesus paying the price for us to not go down to the pit, but to have life and have life eternally. So that's what the story is about. Now this is what will happen if we receive this word. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. Now this was literally fulfilled in Job's life, but it's also for us a prophecy. He shall pray unto God and he will be favorable unto him and I shall see his face with joy, for he will render unto man his righteousness. He looketh upon man and if any say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not, he will deliver his soul from going into the pit, and his life shall see the light. Lo, all these things work with God oftentimes for man. To bring back his soul from the pit, to be enlightened with the light of the living. Now take close note. Here God is starting to speak to you today. Mark well, O Job, hearken unto me, hold your peace, and I will speak. Now you got to listen, because what God is going to say to us today is awesome. Job, this is what I want to do, but you must just hold your peace. Keep your mouth shut, Job, so that I can speak, Job. If you have anything to say, answer me, speak. For I desire to justify you. But if not, hearken unto me. Hold your peace and I shall teach you wisdom. In other words, God's saying, Job, from chapter 1 till now, you've been speaking. The Lord giveth, the Lord taken away. The Lord has hit me with sores. The Lord has done this. The Lord has taken my children. Job, would you just hold your peace now? I want to speak for a change. If you have anything to say to justify yourself, speak. But if you can't justify yourself, would you just hold your peace that I can speak? So God is saying, Job, you've been speaking, speaking, speaking. But if you truly have something to justify yourself, then answer me. But if not, Job, would you just hold your peace? That I can teach you wisdom. Job 42. Then Job, a lot of stuff happened now. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou can do anything. That, you, you, that no thought can be withholden from you. You think God's not going to be caught out by your thoughts? <laughs> Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? 
Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me which I knew not. Here I beseech thee and I will speak. I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes have I see it thee. Wherefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Amplified verse 5, it seems like I just didn't read this powerfully enough. I had heard of you only by the hearing of the ear. But now my spiritual eye, remember Ephesians 1, I pray that the eyes of your spirit may be opened. My spiritual eye see you. Therefore, I loathe my words. I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. Verse 10. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job and restored his fortunes. Come on, somebody just shout once in this meeting tonight. Say, yes, Lord. I hear and I'm going to shout. So Job says, now I'm going to speak. I'm going to demand from you to speak to me now. God, now I'm going to speak to you. Everything I said is because I overheard people say stuff. But now I repent of all those words. Forgive me all the words that I so hastily said. I didn't listen to you in chapter 33 when you said, Hold your peace that I can teach you wisdom. Now I listen. And God added 140 more years to Job. And he saw seven more sons, seven more daughters. And he had twice as much as he had before. And God blessed him and prospered him. And every prophecy came into fulfillment. Because he decided I'm not going to say the wrong thing. I'm going to hold my peace. Meditate. And when I speak it will be thus saith the Lord. Now remember, when we started this whole series, we talked about Exodus 3, where God appeared unto Moses, and Moses said, who shall I tell the children of Israel who sent me? And then God said, I am that I am. Go tell them I am a sent you. Then we said, every time God says I am, it's what he is. Not only what he can do. I am Jehovah Rapha. That means I am the Lord that healed thee. I am Jehovah Roi. I am the Lord your shepherd. I am Jehovah Shama. I am the Lord. I am the Lord, you know, Shalom. I am your peace. I am. Then Jesus comes and says, I am the light of the world. I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. Then he comes and says, now you are that. Now we come and say, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 10, I am what I am by the grace of God. And I'm not going to frustrate the grace of God. I'm going to say what I am. I'm going to say, I am the righteousness of God. I am sanctified. I am justified. I am holy. I am a saint. Now, taking this whole thing about the I am God. When God spoke to to Moses and Moses spoke back to God and then later he was on the mountain and he said oh God show me your glory and God said I'm going to let my goodness pass by you and you will see me from behind God says to Moses I am now we did 13 messages on the I am confession I am slow to anger I am, I am quick to forgive. And my mercy is for thousands of generations of my mercy forever. Okay? Time goes on. They're spying out the promised land. Ten spies comes back and say, ah, 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 ah. No, we didn't meditate long enough. We can't take the land. Let's go back to Egypt. We're not going to take the land. We saw everything, but we saw giants and we are like grasshoppers in our eyes. We are like grasshoppers in their eyes. We can't take the land. 
Josh and Caleb threw dust on their he heads. They start screaming, Hey! God said we can take the land. Their God has already fallen away from them. Let's go take the land. God says to Moses, Moses, just leave me. Let me kill him. Moses says, God, but you said you are slow to anger. Numbers 14. You can go check it out. You said you are slow to anger, quick to forgive, and your mercies are for thousands of generations. God says, on your word, I'm now not going to destroy them. But as truly as I live, my glory shall fill all the earth. Now we say, oh, let your glory fill this earth. Let your glory come upon us. Let your glory be with us. God says, slow to anger, quick to forgive, mercy forever, then glory. Slow to anger, quick to forgive, mercy forever, then glory. Oh God, send your glory. Oh, let the glory come. Oh, we pray for the glory. Oh Lord, let your glory be in this place. Oh, let your glory flood the house. Let it go forth from here to the nations. We sang it tonight. God says, slow to anger, quick to forgive, mercy forever, that is glory. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 28 he who has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls okay okay look this way hold your peace fear not the Lord will fight for you. Amen. You hold your peace. Job, you also hold your peace. So that I can teach you wisdom. If you know you can say something to justify yourself, speak. But otherwise, hold your peace. Because you cannot justify yourself. Because I'm looking for one among a thousand to show unto man his righteousness. Let's do two more. Proverbs 16. Verse 32, Proverbs 16. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his own spirit than he who takes a city. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. He who rules his own spirit than he who takes a city. This translation, Romans 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are not dictated by the flesh but prompted by the Spirit. In other words, he who can rule his own spirit and not let the flesh take over is a spiritual man and speaks life. The other one is the law one. One chapter back, 15. Verse 4. A gentle tongue Are you there? A gentle tongue with its healing power is a tree of life. But willful contrariness in it breaks down the spirit. Did you understand? King James said it will bring a breach in the spirit. In other words, it will leave a gap in your spirit life. You will try to contact God, but you will not be able to contact Him. Because there's a breach in your spirit. You break down your own spirit when your tongue is not gentle. When it doesn't bring healing. Paul says, let your speech be seasoned with salt, bringing grace to the hearers. 
Say, I am. Thank you, Yanni. Say, I am slow to anger. Now remember, you're saying it in front of witnesses. I am slow to anger. No, you must say it. Say, I am slow to anger. I am quick to forgive. I have mercy for thousands of generations. My tongue has healing qualities. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't cut up. It doesn't speak death. It doesn't kill. It only ministers life because I am in the image of my Father. I am a child of the Most High God. I speak words of God. Come on, Peter says, if any man speaks, let it be words of God. Any man. Now, James chapter 3 verse 2 says, A perfect man is one who controls his tongue. He says, the natural man can tame all animals. He says, but the tongue is an unruly member of our bodies. It is set on flame by a fire from hell. He says, hey brothers, it ought not to be so. If I never say the wrong thing, then I am a perfect man. Is it powerful? Thank you, Charlie. Charlie says it's powerful. Thank you, Charlie. I agree with you, Charlie. Hold your peace. Hold your peace. Hold your peace. Let the Lord fight for you. Don't be like a city whose walls is broken down. Hmm? Be stronger than the mighty. Control your spirit. Subdue your flesh. Do not be dictated by your own flesh and get your spirit to suffer. But be prompted by the spirit that says, Eh, quiet and be Shh. Don't be so quick to speak. Be slow to anger. Be quick to forgive. Have mercy for thousands of generations. In Proverbs 14, verse 29, listen. He who is slow to anger has great understanding. But he who is a hasty of spirit exposes and exalts his folly. Folly is foolishness. Okay, I'll read it slowly again. He who is slow to anger has great understanding. Oh, if I can just understand. If I can just understand. Okay. But he who is hasty of spirit exposes and exalts his folly. I'm just like it. I'm just like it. No, you are not just like it. It's your flesh pushing and dictating you. You don't have to be like it. Otherwise, the word of God is in vain. Otherwise, we are wasting our time. If you are just like that, then it means like 90% of the earth's population are just going to be like it. Then it means we're all going to have this type of life for the rest of our lives. Or we're going to decide, I'm going to put a God in front of my mouth. I'm going to not be of a hasty tongue. I'm not going to expose my foolishness. I'm not going to be like a city whose walls are broken down. I'm going to be mightier than the mighty. I'm going to be bigger than one who takes a city alone. The next verse. A calm and undisturbed mind and heart are life and health of the body. Must I read it one more time? A calm and undisturbed mind and heart are the life and health of the body. Calm and understood. But when you know that you know that you know that you are in need of God. Amen. Don't hold your peace. Because what are you saying now? Okay. There's a man sitting by the wayside. 
called Blind Bartimaeus, Mark chapter 10, sitting by the wayside begging. He heard, again heard, that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And he started screaming, Jesus, pushing through. Son of David, have mercy on me. Disciples, hold your peace. The Bible says he shouted the louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Don't be quiet when you need God. Shout no matter who's in your way. Scream them out of the way. Jesus, Lord, I need you. And Jesus said, bring him here. I hope you see the difference. Don't speak the wrong stuff. Don't let your spirit rise up within you. Control your spirit. Don't let your flesh rise up and push your spirit down. Control. He that can control his spirit is greater than the mighty. If you can control your tongue, you're better than somebody that takes a city alone. If you can't control your spirit in your tongue, you like a city that is broken down and the walls are to the ground and anybody observes. But when I speak, it'll be the right moment. It'll have the right effect and there will be peace. There will be reconciliation because we are qualified and fit for this ministry of the spirit. Not of the letter that killeth, but of the spirit that giveth life. Say, I'm qualified. I'm fit to speak one word at a time. A fool is known by the multitude of his words. A wise man is known by a quiet spirit. One word. Let it not be a nice song. Let us say, Lord, tonight, I want to hear from heaven. I want to be the I am person. Come on, everybody. I think God is speaking to us. I don't care what you say. God is speaking to us. So I do care what you say. But God did not speak to the person next to you. This was not for her and him. This was only for you. So this was a private message. Don't let anybody hear it.